What's up everyone? It's Alex. Motorcycles for Beginners part six? Is it six? I think it's six. I'm not really sure. Whatever. Motorcycles for Beginners. This episode is going to focus on my big and tall riders out there. By far the most common questions I get on my channel, on my videos are bigger and taller riders asking, will I fit on this? Will I fit on this? What can I start with? I'm six foot whatever. I'm seven foot tall. Just bigger and taller riders, especially the taller riders in mind. If you're just a heavier rider, like you're just a bigger, heavier rider, depending on your height, you still might fit well on some motorcycles. Despite what you think, most of these motorcycles out here, they will carry the weight. I mean, they've all got weight limits on them, but they will carry the weight. So if you're just a heavier rider, it's still going to depend on what you are more comfortable on. So this is more focused towards the tall riders in particular. That's most of the questions I'm getting are, I am insert height here, I am this tall, what will I fit on, or will I fit on this motorcycle? So, I've done a video like this before, I will link it in a card or something, some kind of YouTube magic. I'm going to make more videos on this in the future because it seems like this is a big topic. A lot of people have this question. If you have questions on specific models that I don't cover, leave me a comment on it. I will make you your own special video just for those models to tell you how it's going to fit. But, recommendations on motorcycles for Big and tall riders getting started. Let's go. I'm going to cover a couple different categories. We're going to start with sport slash standards, okay? You're a big tall rider. You want to start on a sporty motorcycle. And I'm going to throw standards in here because a lot of the bikes that I think are the best to start with in a sport-ish category for big and tall riders are actually a little bit more standard. So I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you're tall, you want a sport bike to start with, a 250-300 is not going to work for you. Go sit on and try a Ninja 650. Time proven, durable, 650cc twin motor. It's a little bit taller than your 250s and 300s are. Handlebar position is really good. It's got a very nice, kind of more upright, standard, comfortable seating position. If you're a taller rider, see if you'll fit on a Ninja 650. They've been making them for a long time. They're very durable. They're going to be everywhere, used, inexpensive. It's a very, very good option to try out. Next in the lineup. I've made videos about how fantastic and legendary the Suzuki SV650 is. You're a little bit bigger, taller rider. You're not going to fit on a 250-300. Go sit on and try a Suzuki SV650. It might still be a little bit too small for you. That bike is kind of designed size-wise to be a really good one-size-fits-all Swiss Army knife motorcycle for a lot of people. So it fits smaller riders. It fits bigger riders pretty well. If you're too big for it, then so be it. We'll move on. But... Go try a Suzuki SV650. It checks all the boxes. Time proven platform, one of the best motorcycles ever made. Try a Suzuki SV650, go sit on it, see how it feels. Next up, caveat. Kind of in the same family as a Ninja 650. Go try a Kawasaki Versus 650, okay? Especially if you're on the taller side. Same Ninja 650 platform, same proven motor, same frame. Taller suspension, taller handlebars, a little bit different setup. Highly, highly recommend if you're a taller rider that can't fit on a Ninja 650 or an SV650 in the sport category, go sit on a Kawasaki Versus 650. I've been making them for a long time now. You will find them used at very reasonable prices. Ultra durable, nice tall motorcycle. Try it out. Also, really good option for a little bit taller riders to try out. That's an easy, tame motorcycle and is already proving itself very well. A little bit newer, Royal Enfield 650 interceptor not the gt650 like i have not that one if you're a big tall rider you're probably going to feel cramped on that one but try the interceptor 650 different foot pegs different handlebar setup it has a more upright standard neutral kind of seating position to it 650 parallel twin since coming out it has done very well to prove itself as a good platform i love mine no problems out of it go sit on and try an Interceptor 650 from Royal Enfield. If you don't like any of these other options or you can't find them, if you got one near you, they're really inexpensive. You're probably not going to find one used, not very likely, but they're very inexpensive, even brand spanking new. Really good option for a little bit bigger rider in the standard category to start out on. There's going to be other bikes in this kind of category that I have not covered. There's lots of them out there. Honda makes a decent bike in this category, but I think the Ninja 650 and the SV650 are way, 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 way better. Yamaha's got a couple of good options too. An FZ6 is not a bad option in this category. I think it's not quite as spread out as some of the other ones I've mentioned, and it is a four-cylinder motor. So I would recommend those 650 twins 
over an FZ6, but if you see one of those out there, an FZ6, FZ6R out there, you like the styling of it, it feels good to you, that can also be used as a good starter option. Yamaha FZ07, 700-ish cc, a little bit under 700 cc, twin motor as well. That is a very, very good option. Very similar to a Suzuki SV650 in size, seating position, everything like that. A little bit newer motor design, just a little bit different kind of formula. If you don't like the SV650, you could also try an FZ07 if you're a bigger, taller rider. I still think probably the Ninja 650, SV650, you're going to find them less expensive because they made them for longer. So I think that the availability of used cheap options will give the edge to a Ninja 650, SV650, or Versus 650 because the FZ07's only been made in more recent years, whereas those were made for a long time before that. A couple of other great mentions. I want to move on to the dual sport category. Cruiser guys, don't lose your mind. We're going to get to you. It's coming. I promise. Just keep watching. We'll get to cruisers in a minute. Dual sports. Dual sports are some of the best motorcycles to start out with for a beginner who is very tall, okay? Things like if you're really, 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 really tall, there are plenty of 250s out there in the dual sport category. I covered them in the dual sport video. If you're too heavy for those or too tall for those, then also look at a KLR 650. They're a little bit on the heavier side for a beginner motorcycle, I think, but they're tall. It's a 650 single motor. They made it forever and ever and ever. You will find them cheap used. They are almost indestructible. Now someone's going to actually try to destroy one, but almost indestructible. Very tame. Very good for tall riders, able to spread out and everything like that. It's, it's going to be very comfortable for a tall rider. Also, in the little bit heavier category too, look for a V-Strom 650, Suzuki V-Strom 650. It's that proven 650 twin Suzuki motor, taller platform, taller suspension, more spread out. For you taller riders, if you can't find a KLR, don't like the KLR, don't like the other options in the sport bike, in the more, it's not really a true dual sport because a, a V-Strom is a little bit too big and heavy and has too good a street manners to be a true dual sport. It's more adventure bike, but in the dual sport slash adventure category, if you're a big, tall rider, try a V-Strom 650. I think you'll be very, very surprised with how well it handles and how good the manners are on that motorcycle and how long that motorcycle will keep you happy. Another good dual sport for the taller riders to start out on, a little bit smaller than the KLR, would be the Royal Enfield Himalayan. We talked about it in the dual sport motorcycle video. If you're a little bit on the taller side, it can be a really, really good option to start out on. Some of you really tall riders might still feel like it's too small because they made that one also kind of a good middle ground where shorter riders can handle it pretty good. Taller riders feel pretty good on it. It's kind of like a really good in the middle, jack of all trades kind of size, but try a Himalayan. All suggestions, just go sit on as many as you can possibly find and buy what feels right for you, as I always say. Finally, let's talk about the cruisers. I just made a video for a specific viewer about this a day or two ago, talking about cruisers for beginners, bigger people, okay? The first thing I usually sit a tall rider, I mean, you know, six foot something or taller, you know, if you're over six feet tall and you're, or you're on the heavy side, tall, heavy, big, tall riders, usually if they're too big for 250s, 300s, 500s, the first thing I'm gonna sit a bigger, taller rider on for a beginner cruiser is going to be a Suzuki C50 because They've made them for long enough that they're everywhere, they're cheap. For the size of them, they're actually fairly light and they feel fairly light. The stock handlebar setup on them is kind of like a nice wide bar setup, so they kind of get your arms out and away from you in a much more comfortable position for bigger, taller riders. It's an 800cc motor that's proven, but it's a very tame 800cc motor. It's not as likely to get away from you or to punish you for your mistakes. So I highly recommend sitting on and checking out Suzuki C50 if you are a taller or bigger beginner rider. You can also look at a VTX 1300. It's going to be a little bit heavier, but it's also going to be a little bit bigger. You'll find them used all over the place. If they're pre-2010, just the regular Honda VTX 1300s, they're going to be all over the place used. They should be very, very inexpensive. That's the old carbureted model. It works pretty well. Good proven platform. Try that out. Much more highly recommend though, if you can find a 2010 or newer Honda State Line or Honda Sabre. If you are a big, tall rider that wants to start on a cruiser, those bikes are on a nice elongated chassis and they've set them up to where shorter riders can handle them because they have a low seat height, but as stretched out as they are and everything, most of my taller riders actually feel nice and comfortable on them. They're light. They fuel injected them finally after a long time. They fuel injected them after 2010. They handle well. It's a 1300cc motor, but it is a very low output, very tame motor for being 1300ccs. 
drive shaft system. Very easy to maintain, very reliable platform, very comfortable, usually for bigger, taller riders. Try out a Honda 1300 Saver, 1300 State Line after 2010. Another good honorable mention would be a Vulcan 900 Classic. Not the Custom. The Custom has more like drag style bars and pegs on it, so the Custom is a little bit closer in. The Classic has a little bit further out, more traditional style bars and has floorboards on it. So a Vulcan 900 Classic is going to be a very inexpensive bike to find used that should be readily available. It's a lot like a Suzuki C50. The styling and the seating position is very, very, very similar on a Vulcan 900 Classic. So you could also check out a Vulcan 900 Classic if you can't find a C50 or one of the other mentions on this list, you could try a Vulcan 900 Classic. Another good honorable mention, if you don't like the C50, the Vulcan 900, the Honda State Line, or the Honda Sabre, see if you can find a Yamaha Striker. I've mentioned that one before. 1300cc proven Yamaha motor. It's not a super high output motor. It's a little bit peppier and a little zippier than the 1300 Honda is for sure, and it's a belt drive, so it's a little bit more responsive, it's a little bit quicker, but a Yamaha Striker 1300, if you can find one used for a good price, is also a very, very good option for a bigger, taller rider, because it's a little bit more stretched out again on an elongated chassis, and it tends to be more comfortable for my taller riders. I have had people buy Strikers as a first bike, be just fine. Just keep in mind, it's going to be probably the peppiest and highest power bike on this list, so I would recommend it last. Only if you sit on the other bikes and just don't like them or just can't find a good one used, okay? And once again, if you're a super Harley fan, your friends all have Harleys, you just have to have a Harley, you're a bigger, taller rider wants to start, you are not going to fit on a Sportster generally. It's just not going to happen. I still have to recommend the Wide Glide. For the Harley guys, if you want a Harley, just have to have a Harley for your first one. You're not going to fit on a Sportster. You're big, you're tall. I think a Dyna Wide Glide, preferably after 2006, try to find a 96 cubic inch motor, with a six-speed transmission on it, because that's going to be a really good formula in a used one for your first wide glide. It's going to have the forward pegs on it. It's usually a little bit more stretched out than some of the other Dynas are in the same year range. Wide glide just seems to be a very good formula all the way around for a beginner Harley, for someone bigger, taller, who's not going to fit on a Sportster. So if you got to have a Harley, I think you'll find the rest of the bikes on this list a lot cheaper lighter and even easier but if you just got to have a harley for the first one i'm still going to recommend the wide glide like i did last time that's going to do it that should be plenty of bikes to check out to start out with for this list it's almost exactly the same list that i went over last time but that's because my recommendations really haven't changed for it there's a lot of new bikes that have come out but a lot of the motorcycles that are coming out right now are either smaller than that for beginners or they're much more advanced motorcycles the exciting stuff is so it's almost the same list but these are still great bikes for big beginners check these out if you see another bike that I didn't mention, send me a comment on it, ask me the questions. I will make a video to cover my thoughts on basically any motorcycle you want to ask me about. So just put the questions in there. We'll answer them. I'm Alex. Peace.